do you have your absolute dream job? Between, well, I, I mean, you do a few things, but like you, you get to talk UFC. You're a, a black belt under Eddie, right? Yeah. And so, like, you've kind of found the perfect job for it's yourself. A great job. Because you yeah, just, it's a lot of I can fun. tell when you talk about it, you just love it so much. Like, I love surfing. You know, I just, I live, eat, and breathe surf. Every day I wake up, and the first thing I do is look at where's the waves in the world. Where's, do you think when you, you retire, you'll do commentary? Uh, maybe a little bit, yeah. Maybe a little bit. But I don't want to, I don't really want a job. <laughs> I, I, when I retire, you know, I've been, look, I've been, I've been on a pro tour pretty much since I was 19. I'm 46. I took about three years off, but I would still compete a little bit those years. What are the, what is the high end of the age limit in terms of like when 46. a guy can really compete? Like right now? No, <laughs> I'm, no one's ever been my age on tour. Really? Yeah. No, I think the next oldest guy on tour is 38 and he's retiring this year. Wow. When I got on tour, the oldest guy was 28 years old. Holy shit. Yeah. It was like, there was a real, you know, the, I would say in the 80s, there wasn't like, it didn't look like, you could make some money and if you were a top five guy, but it didn't look like you could have like this crazy career. So guys weren't thinking longevity. They're like, let's go have a freaking good time. Right. Travel around the world and get paid for it for a few years and then we'll figure out a job after or maybe we'll have enough money to kind of live real humbly. What is the <clears> difference <throat> between how you prepare and other guys? Is it your diet, strength and conditioning? Like, what is it? Um, I don't overexert myself very much. So my... My training, aside from surfing, isn't a lot. Um, I retain. I feel like I retain enough strength to be good at what I need to. So, so you don't I'm, burn yourself out. I don't burn myself out. You know, because like I, the oldest people in the wor world weren't athletes. You know, mm -hmm. they're kind of people who didn't burn themselves out too much. Right. So, I my theory on longevity is like don't overdo it. I don't need to necessarily be overtrained for what I do. A lot of the skill, a lot of the, the the winning that I do competitively is from a skill. It's not so much from being super strong, having crazy cardio. Mm -hmm. It's making a choice about which wave, how I'm going to approach and ride that wave, and I have to get two scores every 30 minutes when I compete. So it's like I got this 30-minute window I need to be ready for. I don't need to be like in crazy, crazy shape. Cause so what is it that held other guys back in the past? I, I think... There's a number of factors. I think um, you have to naturally be really competitive. Like in your when you were born in your home, somehow you had to. Maybe you needed something to prove. You know, I, I was kind of like, you know, growing up. I I sort of look back at it and kind of laugh. Like I maybe I couldn't get the girl I liked because she liked an older guy, or you know, I didn't right. have. We didn't really have any money in my family, so I wanted to make some money. I had an older brother who kind of picked on me, but I hung out with him and played football with his friends that were all three years older than me so i had to be strong you know i had to be yeah. tough and fast i had to be smart that's the case um, with a lot of guys older brothers yeah. older brothers that they couldn't really compete with and like this motherfucker and so every night yeah. it would just eat away at them yeah it, it, i think it i think it did and there was always that you know my brother and i have a, I, I think we have a pretty good relationship now and i don't think he would um disagree with me that we kind of didn't get along for 20 years or more <laughs> 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 we sort of hate each other that's you know? a long time yeah but you know, from the time we were teenagers, we kind of grew apart. You know, I, I sort of started doing real well competing on the world stage, and he sort of stagnated. And we just, you know, people and families have different uh, dynamics. You know, each child has a different dynamic, whether you're the first or the mi I'm in the middle of three, all boys. Our younger brother was three, uh, six years younger than me, so he was kind of out of the loop. When we were teenagers, he's still a little kid. So we weren't really competing with him, but he saw us competing against each other in, in maybe a few ways and it kind of turned him off to surfing so he didn't start surfing until he was a teenager oh, and, wow. and when he did he rode longboards and we're all we're both shortboarders like you know m more um, competition kind of guys and he loved kind of the old throwback the 60s and 70s surfers on longboards or on single fins which is like not a modern board at all and um why would someone choose one <laughs> or the other Longboards or shortboards? Yeah, it's a it's a real different skill. Um, longboards are kind of easier to just get up and ride a wave, but the the skill you have on a longboard is more it's it's more ballet than it is uh, gym or something. You know, it's not like big maneuvers. Mm -hmm. It's more like gliding on the wave, looking like you're not trying hard. It's it's more of a a dance, if you will, than it is like a some kind of a athletic skill. And you know, shortboarding is just you know you're going for aerials and lots of different sort of fast maneuvers really riding in the pocket of the wave whereas longboarding you're looking for a different kind of you you ride a different kind of wave altogether you really don't most of the waves we ride 
for modern shortboarding and competition aren't waves you would ride on a longboard because they're too hollow, they're too quick and fast, and you can't fit a longboard in the same way. So your brother just kind of took it up more for the fun of it and the aesthetic yeah. of it? He literally was at the beach one day. His story, he was about 14 or 15, and we always try to get him to surf. And when he was about 8 or 10, I took him surfing one day at our local uh, break at Sebastian in Florida. And, and I pushed him on this wave, and he, he ate it and was underwater a long time. It kind of freaked him out. Not mm. a long time. I mean, long time for an 8-year-old, like maybe 10 seconds or 8 right. seconds, you know, when you're out of breath. A little freaky, like you don't know which way's up. And he kind of quit surfing. And then when he was like 14 or 15, he's at the beach, and this guy, he— he really respected this kind of older guy. He's like, hey, I'm going to run somewhere where you watch my board. He had a long board. And he said, will you watch my board? And, and Stephen said, oh, yeah, I'll watch it. And the guy said, oh, you can go use it if you want. And he paddled out and caught a few waves. And he just got, sort of fell in love with that minute uh, with surfing. And it was something unique for him because we didn't longboard. So it was like it was that beach life and thing we love, but it was different, you know? Right. He got his own thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then me and my brother, we, you know, I got more and more into competition and getting sponsored and stuff and and he sort of he he just kind of started fading out of doing competition full-time and stuff and and uh and uh then uh, when i was a teenager when i was in a, a, a freshman in high school this guy moved into town uh this kid named drew and he had sort of got kicked out of a couple of schools elsewhere and uh, got himself in some trouble and when he came to came over to the beach he was kind of in these inland schools but he was good at football, good at baseball. He was kind of a really good athlete. Uh, he became the quarterback on our football team. He was a baseball player, all this kind of stuff. So he was he was a total jock, not a surfer at all. And somehow he and I became best buddies. And, uh, you know, I liked, I liked all the sports. I grew up playing football, basketball, baseball, a little bit of tennis. Um, and, and he and I, ultimately where we got to was he sort of became my big brother competitively. And we used to battle, and it didn't matter whose feelings got hurt, you know? Like, we competed at absolutely everything from horseshoes to bowling to pool. <laughs> on my birthday, every year on my birthday, we made it a pact where we'd go play every kind of game we could possibly, and we'd keep a tally of who won what. It was mini, <laughs> it was putt-putt golf, it was go-karts, it was basketball, it was shuffleboard, it was, like, literally everything, air hot, you know, everything we could think of. And... uh we just keep a tally, and we we used to bet in the millions of dollars. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. We, so you know, at some point, somebody owed somebody hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but you never paid. No, of course. Oh, I mean, okay. when it came down to like actual money, then it was like five bucks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and and at, at one point, he he was uh, he got really into horseshoes, and he called me out one day, and he's like. You meet me at the beach. We're going to play some horseshoes. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. I'm like, but I'm not playing you unless we're betting some money, like some real money. And he's like, all right, bring some money. And at the end of the day, he ended up owing me about 160 bucks. <laughs> and he's like, you fucking tell my wife I owe you. I'll fucking kill you and I'll never pay you. He's like, I don't have the money. I can't pay you that. He's like, so I'll pay you like 20 bucks here and there as we go. But Drew used to, he beat me at everything. He was better than me at basically everything. And so it was like, that a ping pong too on my 18th birthday that i like to call it the night of upsets because it was the night that mike tyson lost to buster douglas and it was it was uh the night of february 10th my birthday's in the 11th on the 11th but they were in tokyo so they were on the 11th fighting tyson lost drew shows up in my house with a ping pong table and he says that it was like my birthday gift all my friends bought me this ping pong table my mom my three buddies and drew beat me 17 straight games in a row and I started crying. <laughs> and uh, I think he ended up letting me finally win the last game so we could go to bed. And it was like two in the morning. And uh, man, I've never been, I've really honestly never been so frustrated and just outright beaten by somebody at anything. And he just owned, I just knew he owned me. And he would just tell me where he's going to hit the ball on the table and beat me. 